This video is going to focus on Adobe's integration with Intel's QuickSync for playback as well as rendering. As you can tell, the CPU is getting pegged at 75, even 80 percent. You probably also notice the CPU temperature is at 80 degrees Celsius. It's running kind of hot. If you look at the Windows Task Manager, you can see that there are two graphics processors. There's the Intel Integrated Graphics Processor and my RTX 2070 graphics processor. The RTX 2070 is being used quite a lot because there's several layers being played back with color correction and a couple other effects applied. If you look at the CPU, it's not even being used 30%. The CPU usage dropped a lot. The reason being is the integrated graphics processor from Intel is being used a lot. It's being used over 50%. The integrated graphics processor has the Intel QuickSync module on it. If you look at the statistics on the Gigabyte statistics chart, you see that the CPU temperature is only at about 49, 50, 51 degrees Celsius. So that lets you know that the Intel QuickSync module can be useful for real-time playback using Premiere Pro. I should let people know that those video clips are H.264 at 2.7K resolution. So they're much higher resolution than 1920 by 1080. Right now I'm playing back the R3D video codecs from the Red Camera Corporation. As you can tell, the Intel graphics processor is not being used at all. The Intel QuickSync only works for H.264 video codecs. Right now I'm playing back several layers of H.264 video codec at 1920x1080. I'm not saying this is hard to do, but if you notice the CPU is being worked at right around 60%, even 75 right around there. If you look at the CPU temperature, it's getting up to like 67, even as high as like 73, 74. Once I enable the Intel QuickSync though, we see the CPU isn't being used as much. Some of it's being passed off to the Intel graphics processor. We notice that the temperature is a lot cooler as well. So it is useful to have the Intel QuickSync when you're using Premiere Pro. I should add that the Intel QuickSync can increase the performance of Adobe Premiere Pro when doing timeline playback. This video clip is rendering out using the CPU. You can look at the clock to tell exactly what time I started the rendering. I want to say that when you're using the CPU to render out, you do have your target bitrate and your maximum bitrate. When you render out using the Intel QuickSync, you only get to select the target bitrate. The image quality still looks pretty good though. I also want to say that during some of the rendering portions, you'll probably be able to tell that I sped up the video playback by 10 times real time, not just by 10%. So when you see the CPU temperature and the clock speed and stuff like that jittering back and forth, you'll know why. As you folks can tell, the CPU is being pegged at 100%. The CPU temperature is being pegged at right around 80, 90 degrees Celsius. So it's running pretty hot. This timeline or sequence was 2.7K. The video files were all H.264. And right now you're gonna see exactly when it finishes rendering. Selecting hardware encoding is how you enable the Intel QuickSync. As you can tell, we don't have as many parameters to switch. And you can tell right when we start the rendering. I know it's really boring to watch rendering benchmarks. Even though I sped this up, 10 times real time, not just 10%. It will take a while for the rendering to go through, even though I'm using Intel's QuickSync. I wanna say that Premiere Pro doesn't take advantage of Intel's QuickSync as good as Final Cut Pro 10 or the EDIA software, but that doesn't mean in another four or five months that Adobe couldn't optimize Premiere Pro a little bit better. I wanna let people know that when you're rendering using the Intel QuickSync, the CPU temperatures do stay lower. You're not using the CPU as much, just like when you're doing real-time playback. So it is useful to have as is. As you can tell, this sequence has finished rendering. In this next video clip, I'm rendering out a 4K project that uses the Red 1 R3D video codec. 
As you can tell, I'm using the CPU instead of Intel's QuickSync because I have control over the maximum bitrate and the target bitrate. The CPU is being utilized 100%. You'll also notice that the CPU temperature is right around 80, 90 degrees Celsius, so it's running kind of on the hot side. If you look at the CPU clock speed, it's at 4,300 MHz or 4.3 gigahertz at some times. It's really kind of struggling, you could say, to render this out using just strictly the CPU. Some of you might look at the rendering and notice that the NVIDIA RTX 2070 isn't being used all that much. And that's true. However, if I was using track mats, you would see that GPU being pegged at like 75-85%. So there is a reason why somebody may want to get an RTX 2080 Ti, especially if they're doing a lot of motion graphics or high-end compositing. I should add that you could edit 4K timelines or sequences really easy using a simple 6-core CPU in an RTX 2060 if you wanted to drop down at half resolution, which would still look really good. The bottom line is don't spend $850 on a graphics card and then only spend $200 on your CPU. But at the same time, don't only spend $200 on a graphics card and then spend like $800 on the CPU. As you can tell, it just finished rendering using the CPU only. As you folks can tell, I have hardware encoding enabled. That will make use of Intel's QuickSync. You can tell what time I started at. As I stated earlier, Intel's QuickSync will not help for playback of the Red One camera's R3D video codec. If you are rendering out the R3D video codec to H.264, the Intel QuickSync can help. If you notice, the CPU is still being used, but so is Intel's GPU, which has the Intel QuickSync module. If you notice, the CPU temperatures are still pretty hot because the CPU is being used quite a lot. I created this video to let people know the performance gain that you will receive with Intel's QuickSync will vary depending on your particular video editing workflow. Are you editing H.264 video files or are you only rendering out to H.264 video files? As you folks can tell, this timeline or sequence has just about finished rendering. It's up to you to go back and see when the start time was and when the finished rendering time was to calculate and see if the Intel QuickSync did speed up the rendering process. I can give you a little bit of a hint, it did speed up the rendering process. I did not edit video clips using all the different video codecs available. I also didn't render out to all the different resolutions. Had I done that, my video would have been 10 hours long. This short video should give you a demonstration of how Intel's QuickSync can help speed up the rendering process and help for playback. I should end this video by stating if you custom built your own computer, in order to make use of Intel's QuickSync, you do have to go into the motherboard BIOS and enable the integrated graphics processor. You also have to make sure you have the driver installed for the Intel integrated graphics processor. As far as being able to turn it on and turn it off within the Premiere Pro software when doing playback, there is no option to turn it on and off. You just have to disable it or enable it through the motherboard BIOS.